Lesson 107, Graphing Absolute Value Functions. So we're going to start by just talking about what the parent function is for absolute values. The parent function is f of x equals the absolute value of x. Now if we want to graph this, um, if we pick numbers for x, if we had negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, then we figure out what y is by finding the absolute value of each of these numbers. So y will be 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. So when x is negative 2, y will be 1. When x, no, when x is negative 2, y will be 2. So negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. So the parent function looks like the letter V, or a right angle, so it has two arrows going in the uh, different directions. So this point right here at the point, so in our V, the bottom point is called the vertex, and the slope of one side is equal to 1, and the slope of the other side is equal to negative 1. So they have opposite slopes whenever we graph the um, absolute value functions. Now if you want a vertical translation, that means that you're going to translate or move it up or down. So to get a vertical translation, you're going to add or subtract a number to the absolute value. So this is going to shift k units up. And if k is negative, it will actually go that many units down. So if, here's an example. If I have y equals the absolute value of x and then minus 1, it's going to shift down one unit. So it'll look just like our absolute value function. It's just the vertex is going to go down one and every other point is going to just go down by one. So it's still going to look like the parent function is just going to scooch down one point. Now a horizontal translation is just moving the entire function right or left. And it looks like this, f of x equals the absolute value of x minus h. So the h is going to move it right or left. So if you see a minus sign, it's going to move to the right. That's because h will be positive and we'll be subtracting it. If you see a positive sign, we're going to move to the left. So here's an example, f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 1. So we're going to, we see a minus sign, we're going to move to the right. So our original vertex is at 0, 0. We're going to move over to 1, 0, and then regraph our parent function. So that's our horizontal translation. If we have y equals the absolute value of x plus 1, that's like saying y equals the absolute value of x minus a negative 1. So because the h here is negative, we're going to go to the left. So we see a plus sign, we're going to move to the left one unit, and then we graph our parent function. So we can put both of those together. Here's another example. Graph f of x equals the absolute value of x plus 2 and your absolute value minus 1. So we're going to move left two units, and that's because we saw a plus sign and we want to move left, and down one unit. So we're going to draw our graph starts at the origin. We're going to move left two, down one, and that's where our vertex is going to go. And then we just draw the absolute value function. The vertex was at 
negative 2, negative 1. You can also pick the vertex up from the equation. We had a plus 2 here and a minus 1, so the vertex is at negative 2, negative 1. Now we're going to talk about when you stretch or compress the absolute value, or even reflect. So let's go over reflecting, stretching, and compressing our absolute value function. So when we have y equals the absolute value of x, it's that v shape that we saw earlier. And if we want to graph y equals a negative absolute value of x, when you graph a negative function, it's reflected in the x-axis, so it's going to actually go downwards. It's going to be that v, but it's going to look like it's going downwards. So it's a Hmm, how do we say this? A reflection in the x-axis. Now, if we had a number in front of the absolute value, like a positive 3, or if we had a fraction, 1 third, the absolute value of x. So the bigger the number is, whether it's negative or positive, it's going to be a vertical compression. So it's going to get skinnier. So it's like the slope is changing to 3, it's up 3 over 1. So this will be the vertical, uh, vertical stretch. Let's see, how do, where do I put that? Vertical stretch. Now if I wanted to do 1 third x, that's going to make a less steep slope where we go up 1 and over 3, so it's going to look like that, and it's going to be like a vertical compression. It's like pushing down on the y-axis. So if we put it all together, we have f of x equals negative absolute value of x minus 12 and your absolute value plus 1. So it's going to go, it's going to face down, it's reflected in the x-axis, it's going to move to the right 12 units, and it's going to move up 1 unit. So if you go to 12, 1, so it's going to go to the right 12, up 1, and it's going to face down. And that's the end of the lesson.